Horrific true crime cases. You should never web search. There are some crimes so unimaginable that searching for the graphic details online would leave even the most hardened true crime fan shaken. When we imagine the suffering of the victims, it's difficult to understand how these sadistic killers went through with it. The stomach-churning details of these horrific murders are worse than any horror film. I strongly suggest you heed my advice and avoid searching for the items found hereunder. The Toolbox Killers Recording Lawrence Bittaker and Roy Norris were a depraved serial-killing duo who murdered five girls by the most sinister means possible. The victims, who were aged between 13 and 18, had been kidnapped on the highways of Southern California over a period of five months in 1979. The killers used an ice pick, screwdriver, vise grips and pliers to subject them to the worst kind of physical pain. They also recorded the screams of their victims. Retired Los Angeles County Deputy District Attorney who prosecuted the killers was still haunted by the evidence for years after the trial. He said, I would hear the girls screaming and I was running to get to them too late. The toolbox killers have sat on death row for decades. Behind bars, Bittaker said, I happen to have got lucky and got one of the most liberal judges. They don't seem to be in any hurry. I'm not either, since I don't have much coming. It wasn't exactly a fair trial. But I deserve to be here so I can't complain. Albert Fish's letter. Serial killer Albert Fish preyed on young children in the state of New York. The sadistic child torturer and murderer bragged that he had children in every state. In 1936, he was executed for the murders of 10-year-old Grace Budd, 9-year-old Francis McDonnell, and 4-year-old Billy Gaffney. The details of the murders are only for those with a strong stomach, as Fish also spoke in detail how he also cannibalized the remains. Fish also sent a twisted letter to the mother of Grace Budd just to add to her suffering. He wrote to her, I grabbed her and she said she would tell her mama. First I stripped her naked. How she did kick, bite and scratch. I choked her to death, then cut her in small pieces so I could take my meat to my rooms, cook and eat it. How sweet and tender her little ass was roasted in the oven. It took me nine days to eat her entire body. He is remembered as one of the evilest serial killers in history. We have another story of crime and punishment tonight from Indiana. This time the criminal is getting out of jail, but as Edie Magnus reports, not without a great deal of controversy. The murder of Sylvia Likens. The brutal and cruel murder of Sylvia Likens still disturbs Indiana more than 50 years later. In 1965, police officers found the body of 16-year-old Likens laid on a filthy mattress. She was covered in more than 150 burns and cuts. It was clear at first that the young girl had starved to death as she was little more than skin and bone. Later, it was found that she died of a brain hemorrhage and malnutrition. Procession to Sylvia Likens' grave. The wave of protests persuaded a judge to vacate the earlier parole decision and order today's extraordinary hearing before the public. Okay, bitch. We both know what you've been brought here for. A lot of fucking and sucking. Your wrists and ankles are chained and you're gagged because you're not going to like the way I do it. You're going to be kept here, naked, and chained down. I'm going to use you for a sex slave. Um Toy Box Killer's Torture Room. David Ray Parker became known as the Toy Box Killer following the chilling discovery of his sadistic torture chamber in 1999. It's estimated he kidnapped, tortured, and murdered up to 60 victims in New Mexico. Many of the bodies were never recovered as they were dismembered and dumped in undisclosed locations. His final intended victim luckily managed to escape with her life after three days of unimaginable torture. Police officers that arrived at the scene of the crime 
discovered a soundproofed truck trailer equipped for torturing victims that contained various surgical instruments and a gynecology table with restraints. Parker also made recordings of his victim's torture. He showed no remorse for his crimes, explaining, It was a source of entertainment for me to create these tapes. There was no justice for his victims, as Parker died of a heart attack in 2002 before he had begun serving his 223 years in prison. Everything designed to torture was chilling. My name? Armin Meiris. I was born 1961. Cannibal Armin Meows. In 2001, Armin Meiwes from Germany posted an advert on the cannibalism fetish website, The Cannibal Cafe, looking for a well-built 18 to 30-year-old to be slaughtered and then consumed. Many people replied to the advert, but all of them got cold feet, apart from Bernd Jürgen Armando Brande. Throughout his childhood, Maiwes fantasized that if he were to eat someone, they would be with him forever, so he would never be lonely again. The videotape Maiwes made of himself dismembering Brande is stomach-churning to say the least. Maiwes amputated the victim's penis and they both attempted to eat, but it was too chewy. Brande then took 20 sleeping pills to kill himself, but this was not a success and he slowly bled out from the amputation. Maiwes murdered Brander by slicing his throat and consumed the remains over a period of 10 months. He was sentenced to life imprisonment after stating to a psychiatrist that his fantasies of devouring people had not subsided. I killed a man, slaughtered him and ate him. Since then, he is always with me. 